Welcome to the Literary Digest. Please subscribe to the channel or give a like and comment on this video if you find it helpful to help us reach more people. Do you ever feel like the world is getting worse by the day? Today's media bombards us with grisly news and divisive rhetoric. It's easy to fall into the trap of cynicism. But what if this worldview isn't only inaccurate, but also counterproductive? In this summary, you'll explore the surprising truth about cynicism and its impact on our lives. You'll discover why the smart cynic is more myth than reality, and how embracing a more nuanced view of human nature can lead to greater success and happiness. Along the way, you'll find some practical strategies for overcoming cynical thinking to help cultivate a more balanced, hopeful perspective, one that acknowledges humanity's flaws without dismissing our great capacity for goodness. Chapter 1, Ancient Wisdom, Modern Woes In the bustling streets of ancient Athens, a peculiar figure roams with a lantern, peering into the faces of passerby. The man's name is Diogenes of Sinope, and when asked about his curious behavior, he simply replies, I'm looking for an honest man. This eccentric philosopher was the unlikely progenitor of cynicism, a philosophy that, ironically, championed hope and human potential. The cynicism of Diogenes bears little resemblance to its modern counterpart. Ancient cynics believed in the inherent virtue of humanity, seeing societal conventions as the corrupting influences that obscured our true nature. The cynics advocated for self-sufficiency, cosmopolitanism, and a love for humanity. They viewed their philosophy as a kind of social medicine, an attempt to jolt people out of complacency and into authenticity. But the hopeful core of cynicism eroded, leaving behind only its skepticism of social norms. And so here we are. What we call cynicism today is simply a deep-seated belief in humanity's flaws, our selfishness, greed, and dishonesty. The pervasiveness of cynical attitudes can be measured using psychological tests, such as the one developed by Walter Cook and Donald Medley in the 1950s. Their questionnaire asks participants to rate their belief in statements such as most people are honest chiefly through fear of getting caught, and it is safer to trust nobody. Individuals who score high in such tests view others' actions through a lens of suspicion, attributing even benign behaviors to ulterior motives. This cynical outlook exacts a heavy toll. Research shows that cynics often experience poorer mental and physical health, with higher rates of depression, substance abuse, and even cardiovascular disease. Financially, cynicism can also be detrimental, with people holding cynical attitudes typically earning less over their careers compared to their more trusting counterparts. The societal consequences of cynicism are also stark. Countries with low levels of social trust experience slower economic growth and development. Why would that be? Trust acts as a lubricant for social and economic interactions, reducing transaction costs and encouraging investment in long-term relationships and projects. So high-trust societies consistently show greater happiness, health, and economic prosperity. The importance of trust becomes particularly evident in times of crisis. During natural disasters or public health emergencies, communities with higher levels of social trust demonstrate greater resilience and faster recovery. The COVID-19 pandemic provided a stark illustration of this principle, with high-trust nations generally mounting more effective responses and achieving better health outcomes. While ancient cynicism sought to strip away societal pretenses and reveal our shared humanity, modern cynicism often serves to erect barriers between individuals, corroding the social fabric that enables our collective flourishing. Recognizing this distinction is the first step toward reclaiming the philosophical heritage of cynicism and fostering a more trusting, cooperative society. Chapter 2 The Not-So-Smart Wise Guy in the boardrooms, classrooms, and cocktail parties of the world lurks a persistent assumption that the brightest minds are also the most cynical. This assumption regards the cynic as a keen observer of human nature, able to slice through the apparent social niceties to reveal the selfish core beneath. Popular culture reinforces this trope, from the cutting wit of characters like House M.D. to the gritty realism of noir detectives. The message is clear. 
To be wise is to be wary. Those who trust too easily are fools. But this widely held belief, sometimes called the cynical genius illusion, crumbles under scrutiny. A study involving over 200,000 participants across 30 nations found that, far from being intellectual titans, cynics consistently underperform on measures of cognitive ability and problem solving. The disparity is striking. In standardized tests of analytical skills, mathematical reasoning, and verbal comprehension, those with cynical outlooks score significantly lower than their more trusting counterparts. Perhaps even more surprising, cynics falter in the very areas where one might expect them to excel, detecting lies and navigating complex social situations. The data paints a clear picture. Cynicism correlates not with keen insight, but with blunted perception. But if cynicism isn't a sign of wisdom, why do so many embrace it? The answer often lies in personal history. Many cynics are, in essence, disappointed idealists, people who've experienced trauma, betrayal, or persistent letdowns. Early life experiences, particularly insecure attachment in childhood, can lay the groundwork for a cynical worldview. When a child learns they can't rely on their caregivers, this insecurity often generalizes into a broader distrust of humanity. Cynicism becomes a shield, a preemptive strike against further emotional wounds. By assuming the worst of others, cynics hope to protect themselves from disappointment. But, as we said previously, this defense mechanism exacts a heavy toll, leading to unhappiness, stunted careers, and difficulty forming relationships. The path out of cynicism isn't through forced optimism or naive trust, but rather cultivating skepticism, including about your own cynical beliefs. Unlike cynicism, which assumes a fixed negative view of human nature, skepticism involves questioning beliefs and remaining open to new evidence. This approach allows for a more nuanced, reality-based understanding of the world and the people in it. What are some effective strategies for overcoming cynicism? Creating a safe home base of supportive relationships can provide the emotional security needed to challenge long-held negative beliefs. Cognitive behavioral therapy offers practical tools for examining and updating cynical assumptions. For instance, a person convinced that everyone is out for themselves might be encouraged to look for examples of altruism in their daily life. These exercises, repeated over time, can gradually shift a person's perspective. Overcoming cynicism is about emotional and intellectual growth. It takes courage to question not just others, but ourselves, including our deeply held beliefs about human nature. In doing so, we open ourselves to a richer, more nuanced understanding of the world, one that acknowledges human flaws without missing our capacity for goodness. Chapter 3 Looking for Good News in 2009, a Canadian newspaper conducted a social experiment that would challenge our assumptions about human nature. The Toronto Star scattered 20 wallets across the city, each containing money and contact information. Conventional wisdom might suggest that most of these wallets would disappear, pocketed by opportunistic finders. Yet the results told a different story. 16 out of 20 wallets were returned to their owners. The experiment was later replicated on a global scale in a study with over 17,000 wallets left across 40 countries. The results? Consistently high rates of honest behavior. Most wallets were returned, regardless of the country, with some countries scoring as high as 80%. Why, then, do we persist in believing the worst about our fellow human beings? The answer may lie in our evolutionary history. Our brains evolved a negativity bias, a tendency to focus on and remember negative information more readily than positive. This bias served our ancestors well, helping them detect cheaters and avoid threats. But in our modern world, this mechanism often causes us to overestimate the prevalence of dishonesty and malice around us. This skewed perception is amplified by the media. News outlets, driven by the attention economy, prioritize negative stories that grab our attention and trigger our innate negativity bias. 
Headlines scream of crime waves, corruption, and societal decay, while the countless stories of everyday kindness and cooperation rarely make the front page. This constant barrage of negativity shapes our sense of the world, leading many to conclude the world is getting worse, despite robust evidence to the contrary. The disconnect between perception and reality is stark. For instance, between 1989 and 2020, the vast majority of Americans consistently believed that crime rates were increasing year over year. In reality, FBI statistics show that violent crime rates decreased by nearly 50% during this period. Similarly, while many perceive a decline in social cohesion and altruism, the World Happiness Report revealed that volunteering, charitable donations, and helping strangers all increased significantly during the COVID-19 pandemic. To counter this tide of negativity, a new approach to journalism is emerging, solutions journalism. This method focuses on reporting successful responses to social problems, providing concrete examples of positive change and human agency. For instance, the New York Times column fixes highlights initiatives like Women Overcoming Recidivism Through Hard Work Worth, a program where older inmates in Connecticut prisons mentor younger ones on overcoming trauma and addiction. Stories focused on solutions journalism serve not only to inform but to inspire, showing readers that positive change is possible and providing blueprints for action. As consumers of information, we can take steps to cultivate a more balanced perspective, recognize the inherent negativity bias in news and social media, and dedicate some effort to consciously seeking out alternative viewpoints in order to help resist the pull toward cynicism. Escaping the echo chamber in 1983, the Soviet Union teetered on the brink of launching a nuclear strike against the United States. Chapter 4 Escaping the Echo Chamber The reason? A catastrophic misunderstanding born of paranoia and flawed intelligence. Operation Ryan, initiated by KGB director Yuri Andropov, was the largest Soviet intelligence operation of the Cold War, tasking operatives with finding evidence of an impending U.S. nuclear attack. Operatives scrutinized details as mundane as the occupancy of Pentagon parking lots or increased blood donations at American hospitals. This hypervigilance, fueled by misperceptions and fear, nearly plunged the world into nuclear catastrophe. Today, we face a different, but still insidious, form of misunderstanding, the widening gulf between political factions and democratic societies. The polarization of politics has reached alarming levels, with citizens increasingly viewing their political opponents as not just misguided but morally reprehensible. In the U.S., the divide has led to a geographical sorting as people relocate to areas dominated by like-minded individuals, Democrats in urban areas and Republicans in rural ones. The resulting echo chambers amplify existing beliefs and exacerbate misconceptions about the other side. Americans consistently overestimate the extremism of their political opponents. For instance, Democrats might believe that a large majority of Republicans oppose any form of gun control, while Republicans might think most Democrats support completely open borders. Both sides vastly overestimate how much the other dislikes them and supports political extremism and violence. Social media helps perpetuate these misunderstandings. Conflict entrepreneurs, individual people who profit from inflaming social division, have become prominent. They use content strategies like nut-picking, where extreme statements are cherry-picked and presented as representative of the opposing group. A fringe militia member might be portrayed as the typical conservative, while a violent protester is held up as the typical progressive. Research suggests several strategies for reducing polarization. Providing accurate information about political opponents can help correct misperceptions. In Colombia, for example, media coverage that humanized former guerrilla fighters significantly shifted public attitudes towards peace and reconciliation. Direct conversations between political rivals, when conducted properly, can also dramatically reduce animosity and dehumanization. Here's some guidelines to make these conversations productive. First, prioritize questions over statements. For example, Instead of declaring, your party's policies will ruin the economy, you might ask, 
what do you think the economic impacts of these policies might be? Second, seek to understand the stories behind people's opinions. A person's stance on immigration, for instance, might be influenced by their personal experiences or family history. Third, look for common ground and acknowledge it. Both sides might agree on the need for border security, even if they disagree on specific methods. Finally, acknowledge uncertainty rather than projecting false confidence. Admitting, I'm not sure about the exact statistics on this issue, can open the door to more honest and nuanced discussion on both your parts. By embracing these strategies and approaching political discourse with empathy and curiosity, we can begin to bridge the divides that threaten the fabric of our democratic societies. Final Summary The main takeaway of this summary to Hope for Cynics by Jamil Zaki is that cynicism, while often mistaken for wisdom, is detrimental to our well-being. Contrary to many expectations, honesty and cooperation are actually widespread in society today. And in defiance of popular tropes, cynics tend not to be wise, but in fact perform measurably worse on cognitive tasks and social decisions. By cultivating hopeful skepticism instead of cynicism and engaging in empathic dialogue, we can foster a more trusting, cooperative society. Overcoming cynicism is a matter of emotional and intellectual growth, one that leads to an understanding of human nature that's both richer and more accurate. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe to the Literary Digest for more videos like this one. And don't forget to leave a comment below and let us know what you found most helpful. Until next time, keep striving for success.